welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today in this little video here we're going to show a number of tricks that well are just not big enough for their own videos. And uh, I wish I knew all these when we started or when I started with Starter because they made my life a lot easier. So I hope that at least can help you guys whether you're beginning with Starter or you're more experienced with Starter. And to show all these tricks I'm going to be using the standard automobile data set found within Starter. So nothing specific there. And we're going to start very easy with just count. And exactly in the way you would think, one, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, two, and so forth, you know. All you have to do is just write count. And it's going to give you the number of observations in the data set. Simple as that. And you may think that's not very handy. However, sometimes it's very good to keep track of what you have. And something I found very, very nice just to know at least. Sometimes you just need to use the number of observations you have in your data set while constructing something else. The next thing we're going to be showing straight on here, you see how fast it goes. We're going to go straight to a double one, underscore N and underscore capital N. The way we best can showcase this is via generating new variables. Foo, for instance, with lowercase n. And we can do, say, gen foo2 for underscore N again, uppercase. They're very similar, however, yet so different. One will namely generate a counter going from one up until the number of observations you have in your data set. The other one will simply just give you the number of observations in your data set. Let's take a look at how they look by looking at the data. You see, foo and foo2. One is a counter, one, two, three, four, up to 74. The other one is just straight up 74. Something I find very handy to know and especially the underscore N I use a lot, especially when you want to generate a quick ID variable when you have to merge or something with two data sets. Very, very easy, very simple. Now let's go on to a little more data management, namely something as simple as label. And you may think that is not important because who needs to label your stuff? But when you have a very large data set and typically you generate a lot of variables with a lot of different names and it becomes pretty tricky pretty quickly, then it's very good to know how label work. So we do the very, the command is simply just called label. And you can even see there's a lot of different ones. The quick one I'm going to show you is just to label a variable here. So we're going to label foo and simply say uh, this is a new variable, for instance. We're going to run the command and just see what happens. You see over here in the quick view here, we now have that it has a label here, as you can see directly, where the other one does not have anything yet. It is just blank. But this is as simple as it is, and it doesn't have to take any longer than this. So let's go over to the next thing, which is order, something I use really a lot. In fact, I use all of these quite a bit, but especially this one. When you generate something, a new variable, they per default will always land at the end of your data set, obviously. But what if now we want this new ID variable, for instance, up front? Then you can use order. You can simply type order foo comma first. That will put the variable first, simple as that. But you can also just write comma last and surprise, surprise, it will go last in the data set. Okay. But we can also order and say foo2 after foo. Then it will come surprise, surprise, after foo. That's not so bad. Let's go take a look over the data set. See foo here and foo2. Not too bad, is it now? And now we can see that this, yeah, that's all this to it. So you can put the variables in whichever order you want in your data set. Again, when you have hundreds of different variables, this becomes very nice if you want a quick view where everything is. And now we can use bro, not as in bro, but as in browse. And if you just type bro here in your command line and open, yes, it opens your browse window. And that's not very handy. We have a button for that, so you don't even need to do so. But what is really neat about it, you can do it with a condition. And for instance, you can write bro if foreign equal equal one. So we're going to look at for only foreign cars. Yep, I'm sure I spelled this correct. I hope at least. And see, it now opens only the browse window featuring the foreign cars. And of course, you can extend this with multiple conditions. This is really nice when you want to search for specific variables or check whether you have dropped everything you need to drop. Now, that's pretty cool. That's where this bro variable becomes very, very nice. Bro, brow, you call it what you want, of course. The next one here, I may have shown 
when I generated dummy variables, but it comes very well in combination with another trick. So for instance, if I want to tabulate the rep 78 variable to see, you know, what are all these repair records from 1978, I can at the same time use option gen. Option gen, I can specify a prefix. Let's call it just rep. This will now make sure that when I tabulate this and you see there's five different repair records, one through five, it will generate a dummy for each one of them. Each of the dummies are one when the corresponding number is featured. So rep one, as you're gonna see here, the first rep variable will be equal to one when I actually look, see, it still browse only on the foreign. So we can actually do this for all of it by closing it and reopening it. You can see here, rep one is equal to one when the repair record from 978 here is equal to one. Rep two is equal to one when the rep 78 is two and so forth. It's that simple. And now you generate it suddenly a lot of different variables. For instance, if you have a sector variable and you want to have sector dummies in your fixed effects regression, for instance, you can easily do this. And this is where this becomes very, very neat. That's something I do, one of my favorite things when I want to, well, generate a lot of dummy variables. This here is just the use of hyphen. And for instance, how can I show this? If I want to run summary statistics, so I want to summarize rep one, rep two, rep three, rep four, rep five, I can write up just the way I did it here. And that can be quite, quite tiresome. But if I know that all these variables are ordered right after each other in the data set, I can simply just write sum rep one hyphen rep five, and that will generate exactly the same result. It works the same in regressions in general command calls. So you can use this almost everywhere. So this saves you a lot of time. Then you have quietly or Q U I for short. For instance, if I run a regression price on rep 78, you can see when I run it, it's going to show up here in the window, of course, no surprise there. But if I run a lot of regressions in a loop, for instance, and I'm only gathering, say, summary statistics or uh, the error term or whatnot, and I don't need to see all the output the whole time, I can put the same, but put quietly in front. So QUI and the regression following. I can run it and you see it only shows the line, but trust me, it did run the regression in the background. I guarantee it. So that's just quietly for you right there. Now we can use group, and that's the one that goes quite well together with gen, or the tap comma gen. It's actually the reverse, because suppose now we have a bunch of dummies and we want to combine them into a categorical variable, then we can use group. In fact, it's just a subfeature of egen, or you can use together with egen, which I'm going to do here. So we're going to say egen, let's call it rep78 underscore v2 for version 2, and then we use group. And inside group, you can write which variables needs to be grouped together. And yes, we can nicely just use the shortened hyphen version instead of writing each one of them out. whoop to do and now we get all a new group variable here. Let's take a look. It appears here at the end, simple as that. But there's one tiny problem. Three, of course, equals three. Wow, surprise. But now, given the new structure here, you see here, a two over here will be four. They're reverse ordered. That also means if I find a four here, it's going to be two. And if I find, say, a one or a five, this is a five in a new variable, will be one in the first one. The order has been reversed. Now, a quick way to fix this is to use a user written command. So let's go and download a nice user written command for this here, which is called RVRS. And if you don't have it, it's SNC install. Spelling is a thing. R V R S like this, and I believe I already have it if everything is well. You can see here, nope, up to date and everything, but you guys will just install it if you run it. Simple as that. Now, how do you use it? Oh, R V R S, insert the variable you wish to or reorder or reverse the order of. That's this one, and it will automatically reverse the order in a new variable. So if you open here, you see now there's yet another variable here at the end now, which is just called RV, REV, sorry, and then rep78 underscore V2, which now if you just go and check quickly, you can either check manually, or you can tabulate them against the original variable and see that now they are equivalent. Tap rep78 
insert the new variable, which was REV followed by rep 78 v2. You put it up here and you see in this quick tabulation, they're exactly the same. And that's how simple it is. This uh, REVRS has many sub options, which you can go and take a look at. And I think you should, but it's something I found out to be quite useful guys. So this here sums up all these small, nice, useful commands that I think you'll benefit from. And I hope you do. And of course, if you think I missed any small, cool commands, then feel free to put that in the comment section below. I hope this has been a useful class and you learned something. And I hope to see you back here in another class in Stepness Classroom. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.